B. Okay. So we're going to pick up where we left off with teammate B. Um, and some of you are like brand new teammate Bs. So if you're not ready, that's okay. Just have teammate A do it for you. But we're going to go to your github.com page. And we're going to create um, another pull request. So a reminder that a pull request is what we create on github.com to request, to ask that someone takes the code in a branch and pulls it into the main branch, okay? Teammate B is going to create a pull request. So I'm going to click on pull, the pull request tab here. I'm going to click, click on new pull request. And this is where we specify the pull request. So I'm going to request that we pull May's test into main, right? Because teammate B, you quote unquote implemented the May's test. We copied the code from, from the gist. Um, but we'll have a pull request ready to go, okay? So we can see we added um, 145 lines of code for our test. That's great. Now, to be clear, I just want to like, this is not best practice. Normally, we wouldn't put the test into main until we made sure like things worked. Um, but we're doing some extra pull requests here in our like whole class part because I want you to get some practice with it. Okay. We'll do like a real official best practice pull request here in a moment. Um, but I do want to just be upfront like we wouldn't normally go about this this way. So anyway. Remember that I find the user interface a little confusing because it's where you are coming from is on the right and there's this little arrow and where you going, are going to is on the left. So we're going from maze test into main. Go ahead and, and you should see that you made a bunch of edits to maze test.java. Go ahead and click create pull request. It fills in the title and the description for you based on your commit messages. So they look really good because we wrote really good commit messages. So you can just click create pull request. You should be able to merge it automatically. There should not be any conflicts, which is great. So we can just click on merge pull request and confirm it. Cool. Again, for the scope of this project, we're not gonna delete any branches. We wanna preserve all those branches because that's part of how I assess your GitHub best practices. So certainly don't click the delete branch button for this lab, okay? Next semester, we'll delete tons of branches, but just not right now. Cool. Um, so team AB, like you did your test, you got it pulled into main, great job. Let's switch back to teammate A. And teammate A, we need to actually like get this maze class to work. So if we switch to be if teammate A, if you switch to VS code, you should still be in the maze branch. That's where we left off on Tuesday. We committed some changes, but like our code doesn't compile yet. You should see that you have one problem, one Java compilation error, which is in maze.java. It says the method reset is undefined for the type square. Thanks. So if you click on the problem, you can see like, oh, on line 160, we're invoking the reset method on this this.maze. Uh, I can right click on this.maze and say go to definition. Ah, maze is a 2D array of squares. It's an array of array of squares. All right, cool. So... Let me go back up to that definition, actually. Go to definition. Uh, just kidding. Oh, it can't find, I meant maze, sorry. There you go. Um, let's right click on square and see where that's defined. It's defined in the class square.java. That's not too surprising. Um, so the square class was already written for us. It's part of the starter code. We'll talk more about what it means in a moment but there is no reset method. Um, so I'm gonna go down here around line 76 and I'm gonna add a reset method. Public void reset. And 
for now, I'm just going to add a comment here and say, needs to be implemented when we have a better understanding of a square state. So the documentation, the lab requirements tells us like we should have this reset method and it should reset it to the initial state. And we don't know what that means yet. And that's okay. So for now, we will implement the method. Well, I mean, we'll define, de yeah, we'll define the method, but not put any code in it. Um, so at least things compile um, and we'll go from, we'll go from there. So now our code at least compiles. This is great. So let's actually commit this, this change we made. So I'm going to click over here on the source control button. Teammate A, we're going to type a good commit message. Uh, let's see, what's a good commit message for this? So I'm going to say add the reset method to the square class. And then I'm going to hit enter a couple of times. That's my, remember, that's like the commit title. Um, so those for you who are gone on Tuesday, we're writing best practice, high quality commit messages. That's how we demonstrate that we're a good collaborator and a strong communicator. So I've got the imperative verb here, add, not added, starting with a capital letter, keeping it to 50 characters or less. And then in the body, I can be more descriptive. So I can be, I can say things like, The maze, the mazes reset method iterates through all squares and delegates resetting to the square class. The reset method will need to be completed later when the concept of markings, that's the term that's used in the lab requirements, markings, makes more sense because we have no idea what markings are. I'm modeling a good commit message. You do not need to type verbatim what I type. You're welcome to do so. Um, but I want to give us a little bit of practice altogether on writing these high quality commit messages before you're set loose on your own in a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and hit commit and sync. Yay. And so now I've, I've got a couple of commit messages here. All right. So teammate A, like, let's see if the code works, right? Like, this is really important. Um, so we want to actually run our test, but we have a problem. There is no maze test file here, right? So keep in mind from uh, here, I'm going to show you a visualization to help you see this better. And you can do this in your own repositories at any point. You can go to settings and you can go, just kidding. You can go to insights and you can go to network. Yep. And you can see your branching history. Okay. We don't have a lot yet, but for example, the, the black line here, this is our main branch. You can see we branched off of main and we worked on May's skeleton and we made a commit. And then we pulled it. You can see the arrow. We pulled it back into main. Then we branched off of main again. And we created two branches, maze test, which is right here, and maze, which is right here. Here's our commit for maze test from Tuesday. Today, we just pulled that back into main here. Here's our commit from Tuesday for maze. And here's our commit from right now for adding the reset method. But note that like this purple branch, our maze branch, doesn't have the maze test class because it's a different branch. That's like by design. But there are many times when we, this is because we wanted to work in parallel, right? We simulated teammate B writing the maze test at the same time as teammate A was implementing the maze class. Okay. That's what we were trying to achieve. But now that the maze test is quote unquote done and we're ready to test what we implemented for the maze class, we need to get the code, the latest code from main, this dot here, into the maze branch. 
This is something that you will do very, very frequently throughout this lab and certainly next semester. Um, so that's why we're going through it like explicitly. The way we do that is we update the maze branch from main. And we can do that in VS Code. So let's switch to VS Code. Teammate A, make sure you're still in the maze branch. You should be. You're going to click on the source control button in your toolbar. You're going to click on the three dots here for source control. Just kidding. These three dots for source control. And you're going to go through, scroll through this option and you're going to go to branch. And you're going to choose merge. Okay. So again, three dots, branch, merge. And you're going to select a branch to merge from. We want to merge from main. We're merging from main into maze. We want to get this maze test class. So click on main, teammate A. It's going to think about it for a moment. And now if we look in the file explorer, just kidding. Ah, you got to sync first. Okay, so there, I hit the little spinny thing. I forget to do this all the time. When things like, I don't have the latest code, probably forgot to sync. So let's try this again. Source control, three dots, branch, merge, merge from main. I'm not getting anything. Uh, doesn't matter in this case. All right, let me check again. Here's main. Oh, it's not fetching all my remotes. Interesting. Okay. I don't use VS Code for like get stuff a lot. All right, so slightly revised procedure. Glad we're going through this together. Before we merge from main, we have to make sure main is updated. Um, and whoever said origin main, like we could do that and that would work too. That's good. Um, but I want to get us in the habit of like syncing all the time. So teammate A, sorry, rewind, switch to main, click on the little sync button that will download the latest changes. Now you can switch back to maze, go to the source control tab, hit on the three things, go to branch, go to merge, choose main. And yes, you could have chose origin main all along and that would have worked. Um, Ah, and then it's like, hey, there are three changes to sync. Finally, third time is a try. So now I can say sync three changes. The maze branch is updated to main. And if we go and look here, let's see if this refreshes right away. Cool. Let me zoom in a little bit. See this line now from main pointing at maze? This is showing that I've updated the maze branch from the latest code in main. That's what we want. Yes. Um, a, a pull request is, is like a GitHub specific concept. It's not like a Git thing. So GitHub is built on top of Git. Yeah, and like a pull request involves a merge. There's just more stuff to it. We don't really need a whole pull request because usually that involves like someone reviewing it, tests are run. We just want the latest code from me. Yeah, and and honestly, when we do a pull request, it does emerge when we click that button. So, all right. So now, finally, yes. What's that? Um, go to main. Hit sync first. Go back to maze. Right down here. Go to the source control. Three dots. Branch. Merge. Main. Ta-da. All right. Yes.
No. Not so much. Um, I think you might have merged the wrong way or did an extra pull request or something. Um, I, let's switch back to VS Code. You're in maze and you have maze test. Um, it's going to work okay for you, but I think went the wrong direction. We're not ready to go into main yet. All right. Um, let's run our tests. That's the whole point of this, right? Now we have maze test. I can click on the Erlenmeyer flask thing. I can run all the tests in the default package. It doesn't show me all the tests. Hey folks, do you all see like, oh, I had to open the maze test file for some reason before the VS code test thing realized there was a maze test. I don't know why. So I'm going to run them all and they fail. Okay. This is not uncommon, right? What are the chances we write an entire class and an entire unit test and everything passes? Like for me, zero. So let's see what the issues are. All right. So let's look at the first failure. We have a this is the uh, test. We'll click on this one first. Test get neighbors. Let me run that again. Um, assert equals expected neighbors, neighbors. So this is where we are calling the get neighbors method. This is to return an array list of all the neighbors of the specified square. Okay. And if we look at this, what do you notice about what was expected and what was returned? It's printing out the symbol for the square, so it's a little bit hard to debug. But what do you notice? Are they different? The expected versus uh, what we got? Okay, what's different? What's that? The order looks different, right? Um, so maybe we have things in the wrong order. Let's look at what the documentation says. So this is what you read like, at the beginning of the week, but let's actually look at the get neighbors method and read again what it said. So much of this is like close reading. All right, get neighbors. Returns an array list of the square neighbors of the parameter square. There will be at most four of these to the north, east, south, and west. Oh, I didn't read this whole thing. And you should list them in that order. So the order in the array list does matter. It needs to be north, east, south, west okay well let's see there's two possibilities here either the code i wrote in maze is wrong and doesn't do northeast southwest or the code i wrote in the test is wrong and it doesn't do northeast southwest so let's look at the test first because we're here and we can see here's the all the squares i'm adding in terms of what's expected and the square we're getting the neighbors for is row three column four so to the north of that, we would start at row two, column four. That looks good. To the east of that would be row three, column five. Oh no, I went west, right? So this is not in the right order. So cut that line and west is last. We'll paste this in here. So row two, column four, that's north. Row three, column five, that's east. Row four, column four, that's south. Row three, column three, that's west. I think this is the right order. So I'm going to hit save. I'm going to go over here and just run the get neighbors test. And now it passes. So my, my maze code was correct. I just had the order of how I was adding the expected neighbors wrong in my test. Right? So when we have a test that fails, it doesn't necessarily mean that the class has a bug in it. Could be a bug in the test, right? We gotta look at both cases. In this case, it was a bug in the test. All right, we've got one more test that's failing. Let's run this one. Test get finish. 
All right. Assert equals, it expected 11 for the column of the finished cell, but it got four. All right, well, what's up with that? Um, let's see. Well, let's actually check the maze. So I'm loading maze two. So here's the source for maze two. This should be familiar from the reading. Um, so the finish is number three. It is row zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Row six, what column? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. It should be column 11. So this doesn't look like a bug in the test. So let's look at the get finish method. I can right click on it, say go to definition. Here's the get finish method. This is where we're iterating through every row in the 2D array and we're iterating through every column in the 2D array and we're checking the type of the square for the finish. What do you notice in my code? Confer with your, your teammate. Look at my implementation to get finish. What do you see? I think I have it correct. It's you've got a weird capitalization thing going on there. Yeah, you might have to totally delete it, commit it, and then fix it. What's wrong? I did say square dot start. Why do you think I? Why do you think this happened? Where do you think I got this code from? I was like, wow, get finish is pretty close to get start. I'm gonna copy and paste the code, but I forgot to change what I'm looking for. So let's change this to finish. And let's switch back to our test and let's run it again. Build failed. Finish. Isn't that called finish? Oops. Whoa. What is it called? Thank you. Exit. All right. Let's try again. Run it one more time. Yay. All of our tests pass. This is fantastic. We should commit our changes. So now we're not gonna write another excellent commit message. Fix bugs in maze and maze test. The order of the squares in the list returned by get neighbors must be north, east, south, west. So I'm gonna like, yes, that's in the requirements, but I missed it. I didn't read that carefully. So I'm gonna put that in the commit message to help myself out here. Fix, copy, paste, error in get finish. Cool. That's pretty good. So again, you don't have to type the same verbatim thing, but that's not bad. So I'm going to hit commit and I'm going to hit sync because now we're in a really good place. Okay. Um, we've wrote the test. We merged that code into the maze branch. We ran all of our tests, they didn't pass, but now they do. We fixed all the bugs found by the test. 
So now we're like, we're almost done with our milestone. Okay. So now we're going to do the, the best practice type of pull request. And this is going to involve teammate A and teammate B. So teammate A, you think you're done with this milestone and you're done with the maze class because all the tests pass. Okay. But sometimes we miss things, right? So that's why we do the pull request and that's why you rely on your teammate. So teammate A, head over to github.com and create a new pull request. Usually like when you do this, you'll see this yellow pop-up at the top and like 53 seconds ago, you push something. I bet you're here because you want to do a pull request. And you can save yourself some time by just clicking on the green button, compare and pull request. And you can see here, we have a pull request going from maze to main. That's good. The title is maze. I'm going to make this a little bit better. Finish maze class. I'm going to say all required methods other than reset are implemented and tested. Because remember, we left that comment, right? Like reset isn't quite done yet because we don't know what that means. Yeah. Does it? Even better. I was wondering why mine didn't show up. Yeah, if you have messages in here, like you can leave them. So teammate A, you're going to click create pull request. And teammate A, you are not going to accept it because that's not your job. Okay. This is best practice because very often it might work on your computer because there's some extra file that maybe didn't make it into GitHub. Before we pull this code into main, we want to make sure it's going to work for everybody in main, not just you in main. So teammate B, you're going to open up VS Code. And teammate B, you're going to switch to... Yeah. You're going to switch to Maze, which you haven't been in before, right? Teammate B, this is your first time in Maze. You're going to switch to Maze, and you're going to hit the little sync thing. So you get the latest code from Maze. And you're going to verify that the Maze branch on your computer also pass all the tests. So you're going to go to the little Erlenmeyer flask. You're going to run all the tests and make sure they all pass for you. Question. So hit the little spinny thing in the lower left corner. And then click on your branches. Oh, you can do origin maze. Sorry. Choose origin maze because it's the first time you're fetching it from the origin from github.com. Sorry about that. Do you have it now? You don't have an origin maze? All right, click on maze test. And you're going from maze. Scroll up just a little bit if you want. No, you're fine. All right, I'll come back and help. I'm not, yours is odd. I'm not sure. Yes. Um, I'll come back and check. It looks like you're missing something with your tests. Well, but not on this one, right? He has those arrows. You might just have to quit and restart VS Code.
What's that? Hmm. Did you do all the GitHub setup stuff like on a new computer? Like on our tool chain thing? Yeah. Yeah? All right, I'll come back later. I'm not sure. I suspect that's what the issue is, but we'll check. All right, so some of you have problems. I'll come help you individually. I want to get everyone else running. So teammate B, only do this teammate B if you actually were able to run the test. If not, you can do this later. Teammate B is the person who clicks on merge pull request um, and hits confirm merge, not teammate A, right? So whoever creates the pull request, the other person approves it, okay? That's like best practice. And again, don't delete the branch. All right. This was good. We went through the whole milestone together.